All right, we're on to the final home stretch of my overview of the endocrine system. We're on to the pancreas. And see here where it says the gland lies underneath the stomach. It's kind of a gland slash organ and it's retroperitoneal. It's actually underneath the liver and the stomach. So if you want to see that on a mannequin model that we have, you have to take the liver out and the stomach out. Uh, it has an exocrine portion, which is uh, digestive. We'll go over that later. And the endocrine part are called the islets of Langerhans. So here are the hormones, insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin. Um, I'm not a big fan of this picture of it. It's just kind of a pancreas just hanging out there. Uh, beta cells produce insulin. Alpha cells secrete glucagon and delta cells secrete somatostatin. So where do you find all those little cell types? They're found in something called an islet of Langerhans, which sounds like a beer you would buy um, at some kind of bar somewhere, but um, or pancreatic islets. So if you blow this up, so here's the stomach. See, there's the pancreas. This is an islet of Langerhans. Now, I went through this with the lab. It actually looks pretty close to that. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good picture. All of this, these are pancreatic acini or pancreas cells. They make digestive enzymes. Don't worry about that for the moment. We're only worried about this little area right there. So if you blow it up, here are beta cells, here are alpha cells, and then there are delta cells. And beta cells is probably the important thing. It produces insulin. What does insulin do? Insulin causes any cell with the insulin receptor to take glucose out of the plasma and store it as glycogen. Um, so what that means is, it, by doing so, and it's called glycogenesis, genesis means to create, it lowers plasma glucose levels. After you eat food, if it has carbs in it, a person's insulin, insulin, a person's glucose and their plasma is going to increase. And that is the stimulus for insulin. It's negative feedback. Insulin will lower blood glucose levels down to a point and then it will get shut off. Um, the different types of diabetes, uh, type one diabetics actually do not have beta cells. It's an autoimmune disorder. Uh, their immune system goes in and destroys the beta cells so they don't produce insulin. Uh, so it's called juvenile diabetes because it happens when they're young. Um, type 2 diabetes is adult onset. Uh, that's where the insulin receptor cells do not react to insulin as well. Uh, there are factors involved with that. Some of that's genetic. A uh, person is producing insulin, but their cells aren't reacting to it. And maybe in some cases they're not producing enough insulin. And then you have what's called gestational diabetes, which happens to people who are pregnant. Pregnant females, uh, the placenta starts taking out insulin out of their blood, and as a result, they have high glucose levels. So it's called gestational diabetes, and it goes away as soon as the baby's born. So that's insulin. Uh, glucagon is the opposite. If a person's glucose levels in their plasma have bottomed out, glucagon is designed, it gets released to raise them back up again. And this glycogenolysis, remember lysis means to break down, uh, the glyco part refers to glycogen. What ends up happening is all the cells that store glycogen, they break off the little glucose units and they put it back into the bloodstream. So like it says there, uh, stimulating the liver to break down glycogen into glucose. And they can convert other things, which is called gluconeogenesis, which is new glucose, can convert other things into glucose as well. All right, we're on the home stretch. That's actually a really good picture. <clears throat> so pineal gland, little guy in the back of the brain uh, here, you can see it. Uh, it's a pea-sized structure buried deep in the brain of humans. And um, it says noted 2000 years ago, this seat of the soul was thought to, have as a, <laughs> thought to act as a valve that regulated the flow of spirits. Hmm. Anyway, um, it makes a hormone called melatonin. Now, the circadian rhythms are the alternating light and dark patterns on our planet, and that gland reacts to it. It's connected to the optic tracts, so if a person's in a light 
area during the day, it's light, a lit up room, the secretion of melatonin is depressed. There's not as much. If you turn the lights out or it gets dark at night, that gland becomes active. It peaks around midnight, somewhere in there. Um, in your lesson for this section, there's a great diagram in there for that. But that's, um, anyway, that's the pineal gland right there. And like I said, the thymus, which is here, and I think I have, no, I don't. Okay, well, the thymus is a, a gland that sits right on top of the heart. And what it does, it secretes a hormone called thymosin, and it causes a lymphocyte, a blood cell, um, that's produced by bone marrow to become something called a T cell. And that's a, an immunity. It's involved in what's called specific immunity. And T cells are 80% of that. <clears throat> With all the virus stuff going on, when you have an immune response that's very specific, T cells are the ones that are involved with that. So it lies in the mediastinum between the lungs. <clears throat> it's large in kids. It gets smaller in adults. And uh, yeah, it produces thymosin. So a type of white blood cell, and they become T cells. And that, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is all of it. We're going to cover these later. Um, just to it's on your PowerPoint here, but yeah, ovaries produce uh, estrogen and, pro and progesterone. Those are both reproductive hormones. Uh, testes make testosterone. Those are all primary, they cause primary male and female characteristics, as well as secondary characteristics. And um, yeah, the placenta, a developing fetus, can take care of itself after a certain point. And uh, it also produces um, estrogen, progesterone, and what are called the gonadotropins. That's luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. So, um, yeah, that's it, the end. So, thanks for listening. Um, I'm going to make one for every section we cover. So, if you have any questions, you guys let me know. Thanks. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold Sex